Hello, hello, welcome to the vlog style video for the first week of animation, a month long animation challenge challenging you to learn animation from the ground up and if you're a scientist use it as a tool to communicate your science so that we can all learn some weird facts with you. Um, if you want to learn more about this challenge then click this video to see the introduction. I also have had an animation video where I talk to an animator about this challenge giving tips and tricks. You should also go and check that out too because that is super helpful and a really interesting interview which is linked here. I can never remember which side it is because it's flipped when you're in the video. So this month's challenge which uh, I will explain in more detail in this video. That's a lot of links to click on. Hopefully if you do go click on them, you then come back, I suppose. If you haven't come back, then me saying this is useless. Anyway, um, this month, this week's challenge of this month is to do a flipbook animation. And in the end of the last video, I did say that I didn't have any ideas of what to do and that maybe I would speak about trying to work out inspiration. There are lots of ways to get inspiration. A lot of the time I like to flip through books that I have, look at different species, have a flip through Pinterest if that's a thing. But I kind of told a little bit of a lie last time. I did have an idea and it was my gut feeling, the gut reason as soon as I thought flip book, yeah, we should do this. And then I went, oh no, that sounds like a terrible idea because it sounds really difficult and I've been trying to put it in the back of my mind and come up with something easier, but I'm, I'm still too excited. I still like the idea too much that I'm going to try it. It's likely that it won't work out too good, but it's just, I think even the process of doing it would be fun to see. You guys are going to learn something and it's definitely going to help me as well. So my idea for the flip book is to basically, um, so on Wednesday, I'll release the final versions of the flipbook that I come out with and I'll also make more of like a formal scientific communication video compared to this which is just like a nice chilled vlog where I chat to you about my random thoughts and something which I found really fascinating when I was at university was realising the link between body shape I suppose and how species lived and that was really interesting to me and something that's really apparent in fish. And fish have lots of different body types. The fins are different, the, you get have long eel-like fish, you have thin fish, you have the ocean sun fish, which is basically like Mario, or if it turns to the side it looks like paper. And all of these different forms of fish exist because they have evolved to live in their little niche, their little area of the world, and how their body is is the best way that they know of that has evolved to live in that zone. A lot of coral reef fish need to be able to dart in and out and need to be nippy, a bit like Dory, where she can turn really quick and she can move really fast. But then you have other fish like tuna and that is made for long distance power. It's the, you know, the, the planes, the jet planes of fish. They are built to just swim far and swim fast. And then you have other fish which are kind of in the middle of that, where they are both good at turning because they have to get away from bigger predators and they can also swim really far, but they're just average at both. Anyway, long ramble. I'll explain it better in the video, maybe before. Maybe I won't even include this. Anyway, long ramble. What I want to do is make three flip books where we draw the shape of a fish I'm, I'm going to cut out this, I'm not going to include like the details, I'm not going to draw 1700 scales on every fish, but the shape of the body of the fish at least, and its fins, and draw one swim cycle. So in animation there is something called a walk cycle, basically means taking one full step and then if you repeat that it looks like they're walking, because you do the same movements in one round. I want to do one swim cycle and then I can keep drawing or tracing over the same thing or I could just I suppose flip it once and edit it so it looks like it's moving a lot more. But that kind of does that defeat the purpose of a flip book? We'll see how long it takes to do one swim cycle for each fish before I decide if I'm gonna draw more of the fish so that it looks like it's moving further. And 
I don't know what fish I'm going to use yet, but I've got on my website, um, on, my, on my YouTube, uh, a video of all the footage I took at the Plymouth Aquarium. And I took my Olympus 2G5 when I went to that aquarium and it has a slow-mo setting on. So I've got lots of slow motion pictures, um, videos, slow motion videos of all of these fish moving in different ways. And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch that and I'm going to pick three fish species I think demonstrate the different movements of different types of fish. And then in this vlog I'm going to attempt to make the first flipbook at least draw some of it, vlog how I'm finding it and share that with you guys and then a couple of days will pass and it'll be Wednesday and hopefully you might have found some time during then to do your own flipbook but we can kind of compare and chat about it on Wednesday when the proper video comes out. Also as well this video has come out today if you're watching it as part of the challenge on hopefully on a Sunday and I'm hoping to get everything out on Saturday morning but something came up this week and I just had to delay everything um, until the Sunday so I'm sorry that you've got less time between when this video comes out I'm making a flipbook but don't worry there's no pressure to make sure each video is done for Wednesday it's just you know a fun challenge so get your flipbooks done um, whenever you can and uh, I'm really really excited to see them I genuinely am excited to try so let me look at this footage now let me see what I think. If you guys want to do something similar, go check out that video as well. Um, have a look at the footage of fish if you want to do a flipbook of fish swimming. Um, Slow-mo footage in particular is great because what we're going to be doing as an animation is basically trying to look at the fish swimming in slow motion and take stills of that. And um, fingers crossed, I hate drawing fish. Fish are really hard to draw. I don't hate drawing fish. It's just, they're very precise, and this will be a very precise challenge. And this is why I'm doing it, because it's forcing me to firstly get better at drawing fish, but to really observe the fish, and to practice my self-restraint at being precise, and not just being like, ah, that's a fish. I like drawing things that are like crabs and blobs and things. They're easier for me. Fish are hard, but anyway. Okie dokie, so I have picked three fish, I have screen recorded my YouTube video and slowed them down even more, um, which hopefully you are seeing on the screen now. And from this I will pick, depending on the fish, up, I'm going to try and make at least ten flipbook pages make the walk through at least 10 if not more pages well it's basically what i'm doing what i'm doing is <laughs> i'm gonna have a stop and start point in the video i'm gonna pick where i think they have done a full swim through so from when they start swimming to when they end and they're gonna break down the important bits that i think are in that video it should be at least 10 important bits so that it's not too jumpy. Where I think, in the, you know, tracking that, the, the movement of the fins for those 10 and moving them into position. I'm then going to flip that 10 and see if it looks like it's swimming properly. And I'm going to number them 1 to 10 so that I can remember the numbers. And if it feels too jumpy, then I'll put some in the middle, so I'll maybe move it to 20 and put another one in between the ones that I've done, so that it looks smoother. But if that looks okay, what I then plan to do is draw out that 10, maybe three more times, so that I have 40 flipbook pages, so that it looks like it's swimming more than, than one. So I will draw 10 like that, but because they will all be the 10 frames that I just need repeating. All I then need to do is trace that frame 10 times and put them back in order. That's the plan, so that I'm not changing it too much. That is the plan. That's the plan. If I say that's the plan enough times, it'll seem like I have a proper plan for this. That's the plan. <laughs> Guys, I know, like, I'm going to open my paper while I talk to you. Scissors. Got a nice new paper. Um, 
I know it seems like I should know what I'm doing, but I'm not gonna pretend with you guys. I'm not an animator, you guys know this. It's all about learning and about going for it. And to be honest, most of my channel is just this. I don't really know what's going on. I don't know what's gonna get even included in this edit. This might not even get included because I could go away and I could fail at all these different things and I could not include it in the edit. And I could then just come out with a nice shiny video on Wednesday being like, guys, this is how you do a flipbook and this is what we learn. But that's not realistic. Not really. I mean, paper cut. See, I can't even open paper without giving myself a paper cut. These are the things you need to see. Um, no, just seriously, look, there's, there's, there's no point in me lying. There's, yeah. You guys should deserve to see what it's actually like because you guys then know that you need to just keep trying like i uh when it comes to video editing it took me so long to get to learn to video edit it's taken me so long to get comfortable talking to a camera and um, you know i just want to encourage you guys to try as much as possible and don't be embarrassed if you don't know what's going on or doing because i don't know and i've put out almost over 100 videos on youtube about different stuff that i've just tried which is on the internet forever <laughs> i'll let you be the judge of whether that's embarrassing or not but i don't think it is i think it's great that everyone is trying something new and that they're trying to learn and if I do all this flipbook stuff and it fails I've tried <laughs> I've tried guys I've really tried oh god oh my god look at this it looks like some sort of noir crime film the evidence okay so to guide out how big I am doing the paper I'm going to be using this apple box but i'm not going to go the whole way along about there and look like flip book size okay as we enter the cutting montage this is a montage of rather a long time when i realized that cutting paper is harder than I thought it was going to be. Now, I also realise that I am not a very patient or precise person when it comes to just really wanting to jump into an art project. But with flipbooks, it's so important that the paper lines up because later on you see we run into problems with it jumping. So I would recommend, if you are like me and you are impatient, and you don't mind using something with bright colours, then maybe using something like a post-it note is going to help. But if you want a full-on white flip book, then get some good scissors that are nice and sharp, unlike mine, which I, I don't know what was going on with mine. Mine were not paying attention, were not being good. But just <laughs> taking the time to make sure that it all lines up exactly, because in the long run, you will be a bit gutted when you spend hours drawing on this paper, only for the flipbook to kind of not work. However, I do come up with a few solutions that really do help the paper later on. As you can see, it's quite chunky, but does kind of flip and jump between your hands now. But don't worry, as we go on, if you have run into some problems with uh, making the flipbook even, there are a couple of things we're going to do to fix it. So. Again, this is why I'm doing a vlog style video where you can kind of see what's going on in my thought pattern because if you stumble across the same problems that I've had, I am here to help. You can learn from my failure. <laughs> um, so what I did try and do is get, I got the smallest flip paper that I had and put that at the start of everything um, and then tried to cut that to size. It wasn't quite lining up still. So I got a hole punch. I lined it up with the corner. I then lined that whole punch hole up with every other piece so that we would have kind of a reference point that we could use so that even if the edges of the paper didn't line up, hopefully the drawing should line up and the paper will just look a bit raggedy around the edges. This is also a really weird hole punch that's like a flat and transportable one, so it's a bit of effort. But don't worry guys, I did it. <laughs> now for flipbooks, you need something to bind it with and I just didn't 
have anything I didn't have anything lying around the house and uh, obviously it's a bit di more difficult these days to get stuff in and I just felt you know what let me use a paintbrush it's easier so I used a paintbrush that would tighten you know there's like a thin bit of the paintbrush and it goes up to a thicker bit where you normally hold it so that the the paper didn't go any further down and actually pushing that made it really tight I had a few bits of where the paper wasn't lining up still so I went and just tried to even up all the edges so that they were as flat as possible and um that that did help some more to try and get it cut and even again you know what I mean what I was talking about earlier so much easier if you just do it right in the first place <laughs> you live and learn So at this point I thought we had a reasonable amount of paper, you know, it was a reasonable shape that I could start drawing and just hoped that it would all line up in the end, which it does at this stage, um, as you'll see, but with a bit of patience, um, it, that this was enough, this did actually work. Um, the So I started with the first page and I just started to draw my first fish. I just wanted to keep it simple with the shape of the body and the fins. I'm not adding all the details in. That's kind of not what the point of this animation is for anyway. And uh, it would be really difficult to do it on... Um, yeah, it would be really difficult to do on such a small uh, piece of paper. Now, I tried different ways to try and mark the dot, but then had the genius idea of hole punching a bit of washi tape. You can do something with masking tape or normal tape. So that every time I drew a uh, fish, I would line up that hole so that when we went to the end and kind of bound the flip book, the fish would all line up. And that really super helped. I think that saved this flip book in the end was that hole punching move kind of saved my uh, blunder with being unable to cut uh, the same size bit of paper over and over again. <laughs> The only thing left for me to do was to stick on the Wicked soundtrack and uh, draw the rest of the fishes. What do you guys listen to when you when you do art? Do you guys watch movies? Do you listen to music? I do love a good movie every now and again, but it has to be one I've seen before. But I mainly listen to movie or uh, like musical theatre soundtracks and uh, use it as a real indulgent session where I just put my favourite music on and kind of zone out. I really, really enjoy that. I'm going to be the first to admit, that's not great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we've got a few problems. One is my ability to flip a flip book. Some of it is because the paper is uneven, but that is kind of getting better the more I practice. And also I think if I flip it the other way so that it starts at the back, I can flick it, e like flip it easier. So that one we can we can think, but it's I've I've done like Chinese whispers, but with paper, because this dude at the end is not is is not this dude, is he? He's just not. And I also think we need something that shows it's moving forward, so a few bubbles or something to look it's going back. We're definitely gonna redo it because I think the fact that this body shape is fundamentally changing is more of an issue. So we're going to redo it, and I'm going to be a lot more vigilant with myself and force myself to make sure that it is exactly the same fish I draw every time. This is going to be hard, guys. Um, I think I need a coffee first. Let me go get a coffee, and I'll reconvene. One wicked song and a kettle boiling later. Okay, strong cup of coffee. Didn't mean to make it that strong, but it is a strong cup of coffee. 
Um, and we are ready to attempt round two. What am I doing? I am uh, going to not draw it differently each time so that my fish ends up looking like an alien. And if that doesn't work, we'll come with something else. Don't worry guys, we can do this. One very overly strong cup of coffee later, I am full of caffeine and full of more enthusiasm. We are going with a smaller fish, so um, just because I think it looked better in the flip book. And we're going super simple. I am actually leaving out any of the movements or the weird shading that I tried to include earlier on for the any fins but the one at the front. And we're actually um, shortening it so that we have less movement. I think in the end there's only six for a whole, you know, fin walk from start to finish uh, before I tested it. Immediately I knew a bit of patience had paid off that fish is not really moving any you know up and down in body position and you can tell that it is the fin that's moving forward i did realize i forgot to include the bubbles to do depth so i went back and added them in and i'm also going back to add in a frame so each frame was one to six i'm now adding like a 1.5 and a 2.5 in frames in between the two to kind of smooth it out because i just felt it was a bit jumpy so in the end, there was 12 flipbook pages for the entire run, the entire, well, I suppose, swim. And I think it looked great. This, I think that you can finally see that there is a bit of movement and you can see what I was trying to go for. So now all that was left was for me to add those dots in that I kind of forgot to kind of give it a bit more of a, a forward moving um, feel so that you could kind of see that the fish was swimming against maybe the little detritus and plankton in the water. I don't know if it's because my expectations for this challenge about 20 minutes ago plummeted through the floor, but is that all right? That seems quite good for a swimming fish. It doesn't look very much like the fish I'm drawing, but but the key to this will be comparing it to how other fish swim. And this particular fish relies a lot on his front teeth fins. They have a word, I know what they are. That's better. Patience, taking your time. Right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy these a couple more times and then hopefully it will look like the fish is swimming for a while, right? This is the result of me copying it out uh, another two times, so three swim through cycles in total. Come on camera. I think it kind of works better just as one swim through because we were getting a lot of jumps with the misaligned paper. It's actually a lot harder to do the flip book when, you know, when we've got so much more. So fiddled around with this. In my introduction to the flipbook week challenge, I linked to a video that showed before you start a flipbook, you can curl it and cut it so that it's easier to grip and each bit of the paper is, is behind one another. I chose not to do that because I thought it looked more difficult to draw the tracings from because to do it, you have to already have the book bound before you start drawing. Uh, but it occurred to me that you could do it afterwards. And, uh, it actually genuinely does make it easier to, to flick through. Okay, okay, okay. That wasn't, this isn't, you know. Well, technically it is a work of art. It is technically a work of art because I have worked on it in an artistic manner. But you know what I mean? It's not, you know, this amazing flipbook animation. I wish it could be, but when I said we will be learning animation from the ground up, I really meant it. Now, I'm just going to summarise whatever that giant mess was. I have made this a vlog style video because I want you guys 
to see the weird thought process that goes through my head and that I really am working from zero experience before and zero idea of what to do. I forgot that you need stuff to bind a flipbook, so instead I got a um, paintbrush and pushed it through and you know what? It's not half bad. Let me give you a quick overview of what that mess was. I know you've just watched it, but here are the tips and pluses and stuff. Okay, really difficult to cut paper. Shouldn't be. It is. I don't know why. And line it up. I had terrible scissors though, so get some good scissors if you can. To get round the fact that it's all jumpy and when you flip it, it jumps because of the different layers of paper. A way that helps is kind of hold... Shh. Phone? How rude is kind of putting a like a hole punch or just something on all of them that's the same marker that you can line up and draw with and being vigilant with that really sticking to making sure it's really lined up before you draw really helps um yeah the reason we're doing this is that we're coming up with new ways new different ways to share things that we like if that's a little plant growing in a pot if that's you like fantasy things if you don't want to stick to science don't but it's a way to capture and engage and I think when you look at an organism sometimes you don't take note of of all of the things on an organism on a fish you don't take note of why the fins are different or why they swim differently and just animating this all I changed on that animation was one fin the first time I tried to do morph tried to move the other slight variations but to be honest that fish is pretty much only moving because of that one set of fins which is what I moved and I didn't really notice that as much until I started animating it and that's what this is about this is about you learning a bit more it's about showing people you know I can animate a fish swimming by just moving one fin but on another fish I might have to move his whole body because that's how it moves and I'm hoping that on Wednesday when I show the other ones and make a bit more of you know a video which will be a bit more structured it will have a better video you know a bit more advice on how to make a flip book than this chaos of cutting and like paper everywhere <laughs> because this is the, the vlog style version of it the you know oh my god what's going on in the background kind of version i hope that it's you know you'll get more of a clear view on wednesday so don't panic if you watch this and think oh great i've signed up to do this animation challenge with someone who doesn't know what they're doing and how am I going to do this? Um, take comfort in that I don't know what I'm doing, that as this goes on we're going to get better and I'll be bringing in more information, I'll be learning more and I hope that by Wednesday I'll have some sort of a finished product to show you that you know the animation might not be great but hopefully you'll learn something new on Wednesday and that's kind of the point of this. Um, and the techniques coming later, the stop motion and the computer animation which are coming up later are also going to be techniques that are more refined so stay tuned for them because you you know you can't really refine a flipbook too much because once it's drawn unless you just keep redoing it and hoping you're going to get better it's not going to get too much better whereas on a computer you can keep editing it and keep going away and actually you can use that as a much more refined piece of animation but I think, which is why I've chosen the fish for this aspect, is that it kind of helps hit home that point, doesn't it? That if I can show you that three fish swim in three different ways in a very rudimentary, terrible way of animating, you know, great way of animating, my terrible, my t way of animating it was terrible, not the flip book. Um, but with that just tiny simple changes shows how big of an impact it has on these fish. So that's my plan. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with this. Please remember to subscribe and share. I'm a small YouTube YouTuber. I put a lot of time and effort into this and I'm so glad for every single person that can see it. And I just don't want people to miss out and I don't want people not to see it. You know, if you know someone that would like to get involved, get an animation, do it and make the most of it. I am a small YouTuber. I don't get that many comments. Comment away, ask me questions you know get in touch I 
I want to talk to you guys and I have the time to do so. So start a conversation up and in the comments below and I'm happy to chat with you and check out my other videos on marine biology and rock pooling and all of that and again just ask a ton of questions because that is what I'm here. I'm here to help you guys out with these topics so please please just get in touch. Okay I will see you guys on Wednesday with another one of these. <laughs> I will see how it goes. <laughs> and don't forget, tweet me um, your own flipbooks and how it's going. And comment below. Let me know how it's going below as well. Have a good rest of your week. <laughs>